somewhere along the line, you discovered the internet. Can you tell me about <laughs> the first time you remember hearing about the internet and tell me about that journey that took you on? Many years back when there was a new phenomenon on the market called the internet, it was just like what crypto is today. Everybody mm -hmm. wants a piece of it, but very few people understand the correct way of, of going into it. So I stumbled upon it when I was working in my dad's motel as an unhappy, lost teenager who just wanted to get out of here and just go abroad, meet people, do things. But we didn't have any money. So the only thing was to get to pay off some debts, get make some money. You know, they say, Joe, when you find in life what you're looking for, you're looking for pain. Sure enough, pain is going to come to you. Whatever you're looking for. I was with all my heart looking for a way out. I was not looking for the internet. I was just looking for a way out. And then one day an international tourist came in. He paid us in Dutch guilders. The Dutch guilders were double the Indian rupees. And I was thinking if all 27 rooms in my guest house are filled up by people from Europe, they pay in Dutch guilders, I get double the money. So now how, how do I get all these foreign customers? Uh, how do everybody, how does everybody in Europe get to know about this small motel? Oh, hang on. There's this new thing called the internet, which promises to connect you with people around the world. That's how I came across the internet. The internet was prohibitively expensive. 400 rupees, $9 for half an hour. Somehow went there a few times, understood the websites don't open. Chat rooms are very friendly. People help. Somebody said, do a website. Did a website. Somebody said, start writing blogs. After six months, somebody said, put a query form, put a toll-free number. This whole process took two years, started connecting the dots eventually. People started sending this thing called electronic email. I started responding to people who I never met in my life. It was very strange back then. And then people started coming in. On the 15th of December, I got my first customer who came in. These were real human beings. I picked them up from the airport, a family of four people. They paid me approximately $400 for a nine-day stay. And that was my first internet money. That That's amazing. How old were you at that point? Maybe 19, 20, something like that. Okay, yeah. so, you were, so you were seeing your dad, you know, work in the business a little bit. But what got you like, what gave you the confidence at 19 that you're like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make it work? No, actually, you know what? I'll be very honest. There are two types of people, especially when I see a lot of YouTube interviews today. People say, I had a plan. I had a vision. And I would get up at four in the morning and I would work towards my vision. I'd go to the gym. I'd have enough water. Everything was perfect. A lot of people plan perfect lives today. I just stumbled upon a bad time in life. But I just needed to, I was going abroad. Everything was set. I got my education, everything. My dad lost a lot of money in his business. We lost everything. We sold the house. We sold the cars. All we had was this guest house, small motel. We just had to work in here. So the only way out of this situation and to a better, better situation was to find a way out. And the only way out seemed like the internet. So my first book that I wrote in 2007 was called The Accidental First Mover. So for me, I was an accidental first mover. It was not by plan. But now I know there are patterns. And when I recognize similar patterns, I go all out because I know they're going to be there only for a few years. Mm. Speaking about these patterns and maybe give a little bit of advice to those who are listening. How do we find those patterns and how do we decide what action to take in relationship to with what we discover? Again, there are two types of people. There are the intelligent, smart people who are aware. And then there are people like me who are wanderers through life. I wish I was more aware of situations that happen. But I don't know. Some people say it's ADHD. Some people say it's, I don't know. But I'm I'm a wanderer through life. I cannot connect the dots. I can't hold information and attention for a very long time. So as a result, I try to focus more on my instinct, which means that I deliberately put myself into clubs and groups now where I find people who make me feel uncomfortable in the beginning because I feel they know more than me. They, they dress better. They lift heavier. All of those. So I put myself into those situations and wherever in any situation where I feel positively challenged, I stay longer in those groups. Mm. And in those groups, I find conversations on the next big thing. So that's my way of approaching things right now.